Well, my calendar told me today that tomorrow's the day, their tag. It's Columbus Day. And according to Google Calendar, it's also Indigenous Peoples Day. I don't really have a problem with Indigenous Peoples Day. They deserve a day. That's fine with me. But I want to focus on Columbus Day. And I want to focus on the two reasons that we have Columbus Day. Because most people really don't understand why we have Columbus Day. We celebrate Columbus, not because he was the first guy to discover America. Obviously, the first people who discovered America were the indigenous people who lived here before him. And we know that others may have found, stumbled across the New World before he did. The Venetians may have been here, the Muslims, the Arabs may have been here, the Chinese may have been here, the Welsh, the Irish. We know the Vikings were here. Others may have gotten here. But why do we celebrate Columbus? It's because his discovery changed the world. It would be as if I told you that my uh, uh, paternal grandfather invented a light bulb in his garage. He just only used it to light up his garage. He never told anybody about it. Well, he wouldn't get credit for discovering a light bulb. Or if I told you my uh, maternal grandfather invented the automobile, he built one in his garage, but he never drove it anywhere and he didn't let anybody know he had it. No, Ford invented the car. For, for American productive purposes, because he marketed it. Same with the light bulb. And it's the same with the Americas. Columbus discovered America because he marketed America when he found it. It wasn't even what he was looking for, but he didn't care. He marketed it anyway, and it worked. Before Columbus, if you look at the world, the Earth, there were basically two parallel worlds. It's like the old Star Trek where you had parallel universes. You know, they, they sort of rarely mix, but they're there. That's the way it was. You had the old world and the new world. They didn't know each other existed. They rarely, if ever, interacted. And then along comes Columbus and all that changed. From 1492 on, there's only been one world on this planet. And that's a monumental change in human history. Whether it's for the good or for the bad, it happened. That's one of the reasons we celebrate Columbus, because he changed the world more than most people ever changed the world. Now, along with that change, there were a lot of good things and there were a lot of bad things. Now, in this country, we like to focus on the bad things. Well, he, you know, it was genocide. All these people died. He brought slavery to the new world. All that's true. All that's true. But you have to provide some context. Americans are, are so parochial when we look at our history. We think like, like nothing ever happened anywhere else in the world. You know, like we invented slavery. We had a monopoly on slavery. We did. Slavery has existed everywhere on the planet until very recently. Most of human history involves times when there were people enslaved. And 1492, slavery, slavery was practiced in Africa, in Europe, the Islamic world, South Asia, East Asia, everywhere. It wasn't some novel idea that Columbus brought to the Americas and you know, ditched on these local people. There's some evidence some of them actually practiced slavery themselves. So that was nothing new. Slavery? Where wasn't there slavery in 1492? You know, where does the term slave come from? It's derived from the word Slav because so many Slavs were being enslaved by the Muslim Ottoman Empire on, on the steppes of Russia and Ukraine and the Balkans. That's where the term comes from. You know, when, when Columbus set sail in 1492, you know, the Turks hadn't had their second siege of Vienna yet. I mean, in, in theory, he could have gone to a new world and come back and find that, you know, Europe had been overrun by the Ottoman Turks. It was now Islamic. I mean, the idea that, you know, Europe was this big hegemonic thing in 1492 and we were out conquering the world, that's nonsense. In many ways, he was there because they were weak because the Europeans were weak. They were overshadowed by the Ottoman Empire, which was this huge thing. And it, too, practiced slavery. It enslaved Europeans. It enslaved Africans. It enslaved Indians. When the Muslim invasions of India, by some estimates, killed 80 million people. Is that genocide? I think it is. So all these things are going on at the same time. Most of the people who were killed 
by the Europeans weren't actually slaughtered by them. They didn't go in, walk into a town and start butchering people. I'm not saying they never killed anybody or they, they, were, they weren't nasty people. They were. These were the conquistadors, the Spanish conquistadors. Where had they learned their lessons? Fighting the Moors, fighting the Muslims. You know, if you if you victorious, you win. If you lose, you're enslaved. You're enslaved by the Moors. That's the way it worked. And if they won, they did the same thing. It was a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And they got over to the new world and they, they did the same things that they had done in the old world. The old world was a nasty place. Most of the people who died, probably 90% or better, died from disease. The Europeans and the Africans they later brought with them as slaves all had all these diseases that they were accustomed to dealing with. The common cold. You know, they, weren't, they couldn't really deal with smallpox, but they had it. You had malaria, you had a yellow fever and then the mosquitoes that they had. They didn't understand any of this. They had all these childhood diseases, measles, mumps, chicken pox. And they brought all that with them. This disease pool that they carried, the Eurasian disease pool, the African disease pool was even worse. And they brought it over to the new world. And the people over here had, didn't have these things. They, for them, chicken pox wasn't a childhood disease. It killed them. Measles wasn't a childhood disease. It would kill them. And it did. So the Europeans would come into a place and 90% of the people would die. Now, again, I'm not saying that if they hadn't died, they wouldn't you know, butcher them and enslave them. But they usually didn't even bother to have to. One of the reasons they start bringing African slaves over is because when they enslaved the local people, the indigenous population, they would die of disease. So the Africans could, could deal with the diseases because their disease pool was even stronger than the Europeans' disease pool. It's so one of the reasons you get African slaves brought over here is because the local people were just being wiped out by disease, not by butchery. It's, again, I'm not saying the Spanish didn't butcher people. That, that's, you know, or, or the, Amer the uh, English or any of the others. That's not my point. But the point is they brought diseases with them and that killed 90% of the population. And it continued to do that right up, you know, into the, the later periods. When, when the Mayflower lands at Plymouth Rock, they find an abandoned Indian village. Why was it abandoned? Because a year or two before, I think the Spanish had stopped by, or maybe it was the Dutch, and they, they apparently dumped off some disease, brought it with them, and it wiped out the local uh, Indians, and they fled into the wilderness. So when the, the uh, Mayflower people get there, the place is empty. It was empty, but it was empty not by conquest, not by guns, but by disease. And you always had the disease moving ahead of them along with the bees, but that's another story. So all these things that are going on are nothing new. Oh, the native peoples were displaced. They were, both continents. But, you know, they're still here. In the United States, about something like 17, 18% of people claim Native American heritage. Think Elizabeth Warren, she's not the only one. And many of them do have Native American heritage. I know people in my family, not me particularly, but my ex-wife has Native American heritage. But, and that's not unusual. If you go into South and Central America, those people have much more Native American heritage. You know, if you're in Mexico or places like that. You know, there's in Spanish, they call these people Indians. You get Indios, Chinos, Blancos, whatever. Carmelo. They, they have all their, their little, little names for different people. They, they know who they are. But that's not new. I mean, if you if you look at Europe, look at Turkey, modern Turkey. You know, the Turks claimed they were always there. They weren't. The Turks came after the you know, Battle of Manzikert, 1070 something, and they started moving into the Anatolian Peninsula. Before that, you had various peoples who lived there. You had Greeks, you had Trojans, you had Cilicians, you had Lydians, you had any number of other people, Galatians. All these people, I wouldn't say they disappeared, but they either were forced out, slaughtered, enslaved, or you know, intermarried into the local population, which is today Turkish. I mean, they were still moving people out of modern Turkey in the 1920s. The US Navy helped move ethnic Greeks over to, uh, to Greece to get them out of there. Uh, so Turkish nationalists took over after the fall and collapse of the Ottoman Empire. So this is nothing new. England. 
England comes from the French word, Angleterre, land of the Angles. Who are the Angles? Germans, Northwest Germans, came across with the Saxons and conquered much of England and then dominated it uh, politically and in many ways demographically, to some extent anyway. You know, the people who were originally there are, are the Scots pushed up to the north, you got the Irish over on the island, you got the Welsh in the, the west, and you got the Cornish people in the corner. You got the Bretons in France. They're not the, they're the original inhabitants of France. The Franks were a German tribe who came in later and basically pushed the Gauls. The Basques in Spain are, used to be, the Basques were basically the basic population of the Iberian Peninsula. Now they're the remnant of that population that somehow survived up there on the northern coast. The original inhabitants of the Italian peninsula are all gone. But the only ones left are there's some Sards left in Sardinia who are pre-Indo-European peoples. So this idea that you know you have the people here and another people come in and steal their land and take it, it was somehow original, somehow different. It was went on all the time in the world. This was nothing new. This was going on as Columbus was sailing, it was going on in the Balkans. The Turks were moving into the Balkans, just as they had the Anatolian Peninsula. Had they not been driven out, eventually Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, uh, what's uh, today, Serbia, all those areas would have become not just Muslim, they would have become Turkish because the populations as an independent entity would have primarily ended up disappearing. This stuff went on all the time. People moved around and they displaced the original people who were there, who then, for the, you know, in some cases, remnants of them remain to this day. In other cases, they totally disappeared. The original inhabitants of, of the Italian peninsula proper are all gone. You can't find traces of them, maybe DNA traces here and there, but that's about it. So none of this stuff was new. And, and the, the, the slavery, the genocide, that went on all the time. There was nothing new that happened. Now, Columbus wasn't doing anything that anybody else wasn't doing and hadn't been doing for the previous almost 6,000 years. That's the reality. And that's the context we have to look at the celebration of Columbus in. That's the downside. What's the good side? He changed the world that we know today from two worlds to one. That's a big deal. And that's why we celebrate it. Now, I want to talk about Columbus Day. Why do we celebrate Columbus Day? We don't really celebrate Columbus Day to celebrate Columbus. That's not really what it's all about. And I've already, I'll, I've posted videos about this before. I'll put the link up here. There's a specific reason we celebrate Columbus Day, which was uh, President Harrison, 1892, put the day forward as a day, not just to celebrate Columbus, but to celebrate Italian Americans. Now, why did he want to celebrate Italian Americans? Well, you have to understand the history of lynching. Lynching, that's right, lynching. 1891, the year before, the biggest mass lynching in US history ever took place. Who did they hang? They weren't black. 11 Sicilians had been arrested for murder. They were tried in New Orleans. <laughs> it's hard to find a pro-Italian, pro-Sicilian jury in New Orleans. Nevertheless, there wasn't really a lot of good evidence. And they were all found not guilty. All found not guilty. 11 Sicilians, not guilty. A mob formed, attacked the prison, dragged them out, and hanged them all, all 11 of them. Uh, Italians know them as lynchiati if they know anything about them. That's what they were called. We know their names. We have their pictures, some of them. Most of them were peddlers and fruit sellers and think cobblers and things like that. These guys weren't, you know, big time guys. The Italian government, which we traded with and had good trade relations with and positive relations, needless to say, wasn't very happy nor were a lot of Italian Americans in the country. It was a tough time, especially for Sicilians. My grandfather was a Sicilian. My name isn't Palmer. It was what is now, but it was Palermo originally. We don't really know what his name was. He came over, he became John, Pal John Palermo. Now, whether his name was Gianni or Giovanni, I don't really know. But when he arrived, he got the name John, 
because that's the English name, and Palermo, because that's where he was from. You've seen The Godfather, remember? Vito Andolini? He lands in New York. Where do you come from? You know, Corleone. He becomes Vito Corleone. That's not his name. It wasn't his name. It was Andolini. That was the family name. I don't know what my family name was. Maybe I should call myself Mike X, Michael X, you know, because we don't know. But they, why did they change her name from Palermo to Palmer? Well, what was happening back then at the turn of the century? Sicilians were being discriminated against. On a good day, on a bad day, they were getting lynched. I live in Tampa, Florida. In 1913, two Sicilians were lynched here, down in what's, I guess, Ybor City area. Two. Just lynched for, I don't even know what they did. We had a mayor in the 1950s who was born in Sicily, became mayor in the late 50s, early 60s. There's a statue to him in Ybor City. You go down and you can see it. There's his name, where he was born in Sicily, his dates. And at the bottom of the statue, it says, the first Latin mayor of Tampa. Sicilians in Tampa, at, in the 50s and 60s, were still considered Hispanics. We were like the Cubans. We were like the Puerto Ricans. We were, we were Latins. I mean, this, this, is, this is what was going on. You have to, if you want to understand things like the mafia, you know, the Black Hand, and these other organizations where the uh, Sicilians were protecting themselves, you have to understand this isn't just because they're getting harassed by on the streets by the police; they're getting lynched. <laughs> they're getting, you know, the biggest mass lynching in U.S. history is New Orleans, and there were eleven Sicilians. So the relationships with the U.S. government, you have all these Italians pouring into the country, these immigrants that they need. They're, they're working as, I mean, just in my own family, ditch diggers, miners, doing all these dirty jobs that needed to be done. And, this, and the Italians weren't real happy with this. The Italian government was threatening to cut off trade. Maybe we should have a trade embargo with the U.S. We won't buy your stuff. We won't sell you ours. We won't buy your stuff. You don't buy ours. So Harrison wanted to do something because they just had this big lynching the year before. He had to toss you know, something to the Italians so they wouldn't be so pissed. And that's what Columbus Day is. They came up with a holiday for Italians. So what are you going to call it? You're going to get Italian Day, Sicilian Day, Lynchiati Day. So is it Columbus? Yeah, he was Italian. You know, He was working with the Spanish, but he was Italian. So we'll go with Columbus Day. So you have to understand, Columbus Day isn't really a holiday celebrating Columbus. I mean, it is, but that's not really why we have it. The Harrison administration gave us Columbus Day to celebrate the contribution of Italian Americans who were being lynched at the time. That's what Columbus Day is about. And that's why I, and I'm sure I'm not alone among Italians, really get worked up when people say they want to do away with Columbus Day, because it's not a holiday for Columbus. It's a holiday for us. It would be like, you know, it's just like St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, you're celebrating St. Patrick or are you celebrating the Irish because that's where St. Patrick did his work. I mean, if you say, well, you know, St. Patrick, we're going to do, he's a Catholic saint, we're going to do it St. Patrick's Day and celebrating that. You know, it's a slap in the face of Irish Americans. And it's the same with Columbus Day. Doing away with Columbus Day is a slap in the face of Italian Americans. It's offensive. It's offensive. You know, Indigenous people get their day, that's our day. That's our day, Columbus Day. It's the day for Italian Americans. And that's it. And that's why we have it. And that's why I don't want to see it taken away. So that's my attempt to contextualize why we celebrate Columbus Day. Looking at the reasons for it, which are, are varied and many and important, especially to Italian Americans. If there's something you'd like to say, leave it in a comment. I'd be happy to hear your take on all of this. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, that helps. Share the video with your friends. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. And until the next time, stand tall, confront the resistance, and keep fighting.